Hello everyone. So in this lesson we're going to start with quadrilaterals. Now have you guys ever ridden or driven a quad bike? Well a quad bike has four wheels and so a quadrilateral is any shape that has four sides. It does not have to look neat. It can be anything. It can be a square. It could be a rectangle. It could be a strange looking shape. Oh no that's not going to get me to four. Could be something like that, that's a four sided shape. It could be any four sided shape. So a quadrilateral is a four sided shape. And we get many different types. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the most popular, popular one, which is a parallelogram. Now, what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a shape that has parallel sides. So it looks like this. And so we can say that the opposite sides are parallel to each other, so, so we show it like that. Okay, so that is one of the things. So we can say here a parallelogram has parallel sides, and it's got two pairs. Okay, then we can also say that the opposite sides are equal in length. So for example, this one and this one, and these two are equal in length. So we can say two, uh, we can say equal sides, and then I'm going to say two pairs. Then we can talk about angles. Now for a parallelogram, the opposite angles are always the same. Okay, so we can say opposite, or we can say equal angles, and that's gonna be two pairs. And it must always be opposite, eh? So for the parallel lines, it's always the opposite one that's the same. For the sides, it's always the opposite one that's the same. And for the angles, it's also always the opposite ones that are the same, and then those two, okay? And then the last thing we need to draw in is diagonals. Now I'm just going to use a blue again, so I'm going to draw in some diagonals. Now have a look at these diagonals, guys. The lengths of those diagonals are definitely not the same. We can see that this one is a lot longer, right? But what we can say is that each half will be the same. So this half is the same as this half. And this half is going to be the same as this half. So can we say that the diagonals cut each other in half? Yes, they can. So what we can say is the diagonals. Now you could say cut each other in half, but a nice word in English is bisect. The diagonals bisect. And that is a parallelogram, guys. You need to know this. Parallel sides. So let me just quickly say something. What we referred to was we looked at the sides, we looked at the angles, and we looked at the diagonals. Always remember that for shapes. Sides. What did we say about the sides? Well, we said that they are parallel, and we also said that they are equal to each other, right? Well, the opposite sides, at least. So the opposite ones are parallel, and the opposite ones are equal. The angles, we said that we looked at those, and we looked at diagonals. Aha, now we're going to do some parallelogram questions. And the book that I'm going to be using is one of the best geometry books, in my opinion. Many schools in South Africa use this. It's the Mind Action series, written by people with the surname of Phillips and Besson. So well done to these guys. It is an incredible book. Lots of nice examples. This question comes from page 21 of that book. Maybe you have a slightly different edition to me, but it's approximately on page 21. So they tell us here that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Aha, so remember, if they tell us that it's a parallelogram, then you must remember the different properties. So let's remember the sides, we must remember the angles, and we must remember the diagonals. Now we won't have to use everything, but we should just always remember this. So here we go, guys. They would like us to calculate x. Now there's multiple ways to do this, but one of the ways we could do this is the following. We know that AD and BC are parallel. Why? Because we know that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. And so by doing that, whenever we have parallel lines, we could use F, U, and N. Remember we looked at that previously? Parallel lines allow us to do that. And so if we have a look here, there we can see a Z. And so we can say that angle B2 is going to be equal to 60 degrees because of alternating angles, so alt angles, because which two lines are parallel? Well, that's going to be AD is parallel to BC. And so that's going to be 60 degrees. Now what we can do is, do you remember in the previous lessons when we looked at the outside angle of a triangle? Remember what I showed you? I said that the angle on the outside is always going to be equal to the two inside angles added together. So what we could do is we could see that this 150 should be equal to the 60 and the x. 
There are other ways to do this, of course. You could you could first work out angle C1. And in fact, let's do that. Many students prefer that method. So we could say that angle C1 is going to be equal to 30 degrees. Why? Because of angles on a straight line, right? Because if this is 150, then C1 must be 30. This is the method most students prefer. Then to find X, we could sum up all of these angles in a triangle. And so we could say 60 plus 30 plus X should equal to 180. Why? Because of the sum of interior angles of a triangle. And so if we go work out X, we would realize that X is 90 degrees. Now it might not look like 90 degrees, but remember these drawings are never done according to scale. Now remember that if you did this question in a different way, that is perfectly fine. There are multiple ways to do this. For example, I was just having a look at it right now. A faster way would have been to the, do the following. We could have realized that these two are parallel, and we could have done a Z like this. Whoa, look at that. Can you see that Z? And so what that instantly means is that this entire angle must be the same as this entire angle. And so we could say that 60 plus X should be the same as 150 because of alternating angles, because AD is parallel to BC. Then if you had to go work out X, you would also get 90 degrees. So guys, there will often be multiple ways to do this. Here's another question. So this question in my book is on page 22. And so we want to calculate X. They tell us it's a parallelogram. So have a look here. So if we know that this is a parallelogram, then we know that these two lines are um, parallel. And so what we can say then is that when you have parallel lines, you could use the F, the U, and the N. And so we could realize, or we should realize, that there's a U over here. Ah, look at that. Now remember, with your U, they don't add up to, they're not equal to each other, but they add up to 180. And so what we can say is that angle X, or X plus 2X, so this entire piece, plus the 150, which is this piece, should equal 180. And the reason is, is that we have co-interior angles, co angles. Why? Because AD is parallel to BC. Now it's just a matter of solving for X. And so on the left-hand side here, we're going to have 3X. We're going to have to take the 150 to the other side. So we'll say minus 150. And so we'll have 3X is equal to 50 degrees. Whoa, Kevin, 30 degrees. And so if you solve for X, you're going to end up with 10 degrees. And so this next question is on page 22 as well in my book. And so they want us to find X and they want us to find Y. A very easy way to find Y would be to realize the following. I see that these two lines are intersecting like that. And so we've learned that these two angles should be equal to each other. And so I can instantly say that 80 must be equal to 140 minus 2Y. Why? Because of vertically opposite angles. And so... If I solve for y, I'll take the minus 2y over to the left and the, the 80 over to the right. And that's going to give me 2y is equal to 60. And so y is equal to 30 degrees. Now that I have y, we are in business because now I have this angle over here, which is 30. I also have this angle because if I, sub, if I substitute the 30 in there, it's going to be 140 minus 60, which is 80. So this whole angle is 80. Now, there's always going to be multiple ways to do this, but one of the ways is to know that this is a parallelogram. They've told us that. And so straight away, we know that this angle across, we know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram, remember we looked at that just now, we said that they are the same. Remember when I drew it out? And we said that the opposite angles are the same. Like that, right? And so what we could now say is that angle C is going to be equal to 80 degrees. Why? Because these are the opposite angles of a parallelogram. Now, some teachers and textbooks will use parallelogram like that. Your teacher might write out the word palm for parallelogram. Don't panic. Do whatever your teacher would like you to do. So now we have angle C as 80 degrees. And now what we can do is just sum up these three triangles or the angles, those three angles in the triangle, because that should always add up to 180. So what we can say is that X plus 30 plus 80 should be equal to 180 degrees of interior angles of triangle. If you then go work out for X, you would eventually end up with 70 degrees. And there we go, guys. We found X, we found Y, and that is your introduction video to parallelograms. Thank you for watching.